Kilkenny half back line. DJ Carey of Kilkenny won the toss and he's opted to play from right to left in the first half, which means that Donal O'Cusack is down at the Hill 16 end and they will play Cork from left to right in the first half. There is really no great breeze of any great consequence. When we were down there doing our piece around 1 o'clock, sir, I think the breeze was blowing, as the meteorologists say, in a moderate southerly direction, which means across in front of us here. Oh, yeah, George, it's fantastic here for Horland. The atmosphere is brilliant and the pitch like it looks immaculate, but it is slippy, George. There's no doubt about that. And talking to both the minor players and the senior players, it's even hard to know what kind of cogs to wear. The, 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 the consensus seems to be maybe the old style six cogs, four on the, you know, four, two in the back and four along the, in the middle of the sole. If you wear too many, even the beautiful new blades, you just slip on the surface. It's time for the anthem performed today by the magnificent Celtic Tedders. Cork and Kilkenny have met at this stage in the championship more often than any other pairing. 18 times in all. Cork with seven wins, the last in 99. Kilkenny with 11 victories, the last in 92. That's against one another. In all, between home finals and replays, they've met 22 times in all. Pat O'Connor refereeing his third All-Ireland final from Ahan in Limerick. And he is one of 11 Limerick men who have handled the All-Ireland hurling final. Mention of Limerick. It was Limerick who won the first McCarthy Cup. It was presented for the 1921 Championship, but the game was played two years later because of the troubles at that stage. And we're looking around for possible switches and changes from the early stage. And I've noticed that Comerford and uh, Dermot O'Sullivan are on one another. And uh, it looks like Mulcahy has gone across to DJ. The referee waiting for the signal, and the 115th All-Ireland Hurling Final is underway, and straight away it's Tommy Welsh here. 65 metres out from the court goal, looking to give his side the lead, and he's done it! What a start! First attack, first point. There was a doubt about him. But he showed no effects of any hip injury with that beautifully hit uh, point. Got really good purchase on it. There's the 65 metre line, and Tom Kenny, his marker, was well, well adrift of him. Great start. Donalo Cusack tucking out towards Alan Brown, who will come into the half forward line time and again. Here he is to try and take those puck outs. Inside towards Niall McCarthy, the centre half forward, rating once again, sending it back towards John Gardner, looking for the equaliser. Gardner strikes, but he struck it to the right. He's put it wide. Got the opening point in the replay against Wexford and it halts up in the middle of the field. There he is, just having a little get to know you with Paddy Balali. Paddy, who aside from being a very fine hurler, is also an excellent golfer. Yeah, John. Gardner reaching up for this one, one-handed down into the centre, Shawnee Dowling coming across for it. Taken well here by J.J. Delaney, having a great season. That's Derek Ling, busy as ever in midfield. off well there by Wayne Sherlock, outside here towards Dermot O'Sullivan, inside his own 20-metre line. Long, lengthy, flamboyant kind of clearance down towards Satanto Halpine. Two men going across to Markham. Peter Barry here for the breaking ball. Nobody able to get total control of the situation. Barry knocking it into the centre. It was Ryle, in fact, inside for McCarthy. That's Niall McCarthy. Back to Gardner once again. And he's on the ground, but the referee says it was good. Pressure play by Kilkenny. And in the end, it becomes a line ball. Tommy Walsh is down injured. Out over the sideline. 
good confrontation here. Gardner was challenged. Tommy Walsh was coming across. Gardner was down hands and knees. And Tommy Walsh despairingly went out over it. Injured himself in the process. Score of the only point so far, Tommy Walsh. Usually plays, by the way, as a back with UCC in the Fitzgibbon Cup. Mickey O'Connell, bad connection that time by Mickey towards Ben O'Connor. He's lost the hurley. O'Connell lobbing it ahead towards Satanto Halpin. He's got Mickey O'Connell ahead of him. Satanto trying to go through. James Ryan's after him. It's a foul, it's a free, and it's going to be a chance for Cork to draw level. And Satanta is fired up, you can see here. I expected a very big opening 15 minutes from this player. He's having a very good season, and he could cause problems for James Ryle. Joe Dean, one of those goals a game men in the championship so far. That with uh, Henry Shefflin as well, of course. Dean, who's Cork's leading scorer, four goals and 24 points for the campaign. This Cork's fifth match, Kilkenny's fourth. They're level. So a positive start by... It really is a very, very colourful setting. Pressure, I would think, on Brian Cody here. All the uh, happenings that were going on. He would love to have had Charlie Carter and Brian McAvoy as part of his panel, but uh, they opted out, and they're not available to him. Going back, hands and knees was Henry Shefflin. And the whistle sounds. It's going to be a free to Kilkenny. Niall McCarthy there from Carrick Tool. One of the Cork newcomers to the All-Ireland final playing in their forward line. The challenge there on Shefflin deemed to have been unfair. It was Alan Brown who made the last connection. Sean Dowling dropping it in. Comerford's there. Well taken by the goalkeeper. Donalo Cusack needs to settle his nerves early on in this match. Upside towards uh, Timmy McCarthy and he's out over the sideline. Pat Horan lines one on the far side. Very vigilant. Line ball to the Cats. Henry Shefflin, incidentally, has uh, made a switch here as we watch that in reprise once again. And Cusack made a good clearance. Shefflin has switched with John Hoyne. Dowling with the sideline ball. Pressure on the cork backs. Dropped away there. Nicely picked up here by Ben O'Connor. One of his feet may have been over the sideline, but not the ball. JJ Delaney is after him. Good control by O'Connor. He's had the ball in his hands, so he's got to release it now into McCarthy. Swinging it and swinging it wide. That's two wides now by Cork. A promising attack, but coming to north. Worth having a look at this again here. Ben O'Connor doing a little mazy run. Appreciated he cut the ball too many times, so I had to hand pass it then to McCarthy, but good pressure by the Kilkenny backs. Henry Shefflin's been marked over there by Sean Ogo Halpin. That's a big, big switch on the part of the Kilkenny mentors, I think, because O'Halpin is a central figure to the success of this Cork team. Yeah, John, it's one that they do quite often. John Hine is very comfortable in centre forward. There's a lot of the donkey work. Like, Sheffield can play him anywhere, really. He's a very, very good hurler. Cork will be very disappointed if he didn't get that last point. That should be gone over the bar. It didn't, and this one might. And it does. Henry Shefflin's first pointed free. And it's Kilkenny who lead. Sean Ogo Halpin, the left half-back, would have been expected to exert a big authority on that half-back line for Cork. But by putting Shefflin in there, I think they could negate his effectiveness and his overall influence. Martin Comerford here. Jim O'Sullivan deemed to have pushed him in the back. And Martin Comerford illustrating exactly what happened to the referee, Pat O'Connor. 
Here it is again. Well, he did a bit of stumbling there. As ever, it results in a free in to Kilkenny. Early stages of the final. Beautiful afternoon. Kilkenny trying to open up a gap. And that one has gone wide. That was a big chance. He was being asked to replicate what he did just moments earlier, which was fairly routine by his standards. Yeah, Jerry, he's very, he usually very active on these. Dowling under pressure. Peter Barry's there to help out on the half-back line. It's been a magnificent half-back line by Kilkenny, and they have a great sense of togetherness. Comerford, very rangy player, very selfless player, taking on Wayne Sherlock. Turning, striking, and he has scored! Usually gets just about a point a game, Martin Comerford, but he's a great leader of the attack. And he gives them so much variation. It's three points to one. When Kilkenny wish to and feel the need to, they can bring him out into the half-forward line and switch him around with Henry Shefflin or anybody else. But he shows what a fine individual player he is. Good skill, great execution. Yeah, Jerry does a lot of tankless work. They, they say he doesn't score much, but he's a very, very good big game player. Last year against Brian Lowe, and he had a fantastic game as well, and he started off very well here. Another very big game player, I think, is Peter Barry, the centre halfback. Now, he might have stuttered in his form earlier on in the championship, but he's a man for the big occasion. Keep an eye on him, the number six. Don't allow Cusack. Going left once again towards Alan Brown. They've read the tactic. Michael Cavan is his marker. Brown battling, settling in with Niall McCarthy here, taking it away from a group of players. Slipping. Shefflin's after him. Still McCarthy. Outside to Alan Brown. Didn't have much of a chance of that, but it might come favourably for Dean. Good challenge coming in. Dean still persisting. Trying to work for it. There against Peter Barry. Back it comes to Sean O'Gohalpin. Angling inside towards Ben O'Connor. JJ Delaney sticking to the task, but it breaks kindly for Timmy McCarthy and his shot is wide. Useful attacks now being mounted by Cork, but they're lacking that conviction in front of goal. And he must be a bit concerned, Donald O'Grady. Three wides and only nine and a half minutes gone. First season in charge, of course. John Hoyne trying to benefit it there against Roland Kern, and he does well, Hoyne. Good little flick away by Cork centre-half back towards Kenny. Back once again it comes this time to John Gardner. Swept away into the middle of the field. Timmy McCarthy there battling with Shawnee Dowling. Dowling getting the touch. Intended for Henry Shefflin. Won by Timmy McCarthy again. Peter Barry trying to smother it in the centre of the field. Shefflin trying to roll it up. Everybody pleading. And it was handled off the ground, and it's going to be a free to Cork. Well, they're really going at it here. That was a great catch, wonderfully done by John Hoyne over the head of Ronan Curran. John Gardner, 20 years of age, was on the same under-12 team as Satanto Halpin all those years ago with Napierschik. And he has put this one wide. Cork are experiencing the same kind of jitters that they experienced in the drawn match against Wexford, where they had plenty of possession but missed a lot of useful chances. Yeah, Joe, there are good chances as such, like, as long as it doesn't drain their confidence, because every chance we can get, they'll tap it over. But Kilkenny have opened a two-point lead. Sean O'Gohalpi stayed back, anticipated, helped out Ronan Kern. Fires it in towards Joe Dean. Hickey is there as well. Great full back play by Noel Hickey. A real master of his craft. Crowd gets behind him to Henry Shefflin. Dominant. Good play by Shefflin. Takes them all on. Indestructible. Players calling for it. Mullally, one of them. Lobbed into space. Poor ball. Oh, oh, there was a high challenge. Ronan Curran was tackled high. Referee didn't take any action. Tommy Walsh is after it for Kilkenny. Has it. Has a space, has a gap. A scoring chance and he avails of it. He got the first point. He's got the latest. And Kilkenny with their cuteness, their sharpness. 
are now leading by four points to one. Yeah, Two Jordan, shots at the target. Trevor, Trevor, Trevor tackle, tackle here, Joe. Should have been a free out. Like this, it's a quick peer across. Might catch it here. You get, that should have been free for Kilkenny. But before that, was a tackle across the net. Should have been a free out. Yeah, that, here's centre back coming down in the ball. Now look at that there. That's definitely a free out. Should have been, you know, should have been a free out there. Instead, it's Kilkenny who lead by three. Satanto Halti breaking it. And Ben O'Connor couldn't quite contain it. Line ball to Kilkenny. Kilkenny playing the game at their own pace. Achieving mastery. Am I dead? Yeah, during the physical exchanges so far, Kilkenny are getting on top. JJ Delaney. Beautifully caught once again by Comerford, who's causing problems to the court full back line. And it's going to be a free in. This time the referee has spotted the uh, indiscretion. It's by Wayne Sherlock. This was Dermot O'Sullivan there, and that was a great catch taken just moments ago by Martin Comerford. And following the foul by Sherlock, his name has been noted. So he gets a little ticking. And Henry Shefflin a chance now to add to the point he got earlier on from a free. Yeah, at the moment, you're like Kilkenny are well on top, and Cork are kind of trying to do things very fast, and just not settling down at all, and Kilkenny are edging further and further ahead. The gap widens. It's going very nicely now from a Kilkenny point of view, leading by five points to one. And we haven't even reached the end of the first quarter. Kilkenny were very definitely the favourites, but Brian Cody kept his charges' feet on the ground, on the floor, reminded them about 99, reminded them about uh, 2001 in the semi when they lost to Galway. Michael Kavanagh getting it away. Kavanagh has some record playing under Cody, only beaten three times ever in Championship hurling, and two of them were All Ireland finals. Wayne Sherlock back there. One of the stars of 99 against Kilkenny. Trying to get it away, he's lost the stick. Needs support. And Cork have been run ragged at this stage in the game. Just going away from them, even though it's very early. Henry Shefflin. They're just going through, then stopped in the end, despairingly by John Gardner. Gets it out, but only to Tommy Walsh. Walsh steadies himself. Inch perfect, inside the right-hand post and over. He's got three on the clock now. Three shots by Tommy Walsh, three points. Tom Kenny from Grenada has got his problems here. Cork are going to have to tighten up their approach. Well, they've made poor starts in the past. I remember Cork making a very poor start in the Munster final against Waterford when they were pretty wretched for the opening 35 minutes and then came good. But Kilkenny are always capable of a really good 20-minute spell in the second half themselves. Alan Brown trying to eat into the lead, and he's put in wide. They're complaining about it. He thought it was spot on. Well, from his viewpoint, and I wasn't in line with him because I'm exactly across the opposite side of the field, but he was convinced it was in. It's still 6-1. Ronan Curran under pressure. Does well. Good control here by the Bars man. One of the CIT students in the team. Ben O'Connor. Derek Ling. From Erlingford. He's done really well. Back to John Hoyne. 50 metres out. This one has gone wide by Hoyne. He's a tough competitor player, John Hoyne. A bit like John Power before him in the Kilkenny team. And both of them are just, just loved playing for the black and amber. This is the point a little while ago by Tommy Walsh, emphatically driven between the tall uprights. Good play here by Sean Dowling. He went back, read the situation, only as far as Gardner with the clearance, however. And Gardner can't punish the passing error. That is a total of six wides now by Cork. And as you can see, 16 minutes and 40 seconds gone. Doesn't look too good. Yeah, Jordan needs some of these to go over, because like, they are getting chances, and a little bit of breeze, I'd say, they have it as such. Kilkenny will be very, very happy, because they are capable of attacking on scores, and if, if Kilkenny get a goal, Cork will be in real trouble. I thought that little shot we had a moment ago there was the non-smoking area in Croke Park. Obviously, I'm wrong. That comes in in January the 1st. Here's O'Haldine. Oh, loses the flight of the ball that time. 
Sunwood is in his eyes. Pressure once again on Cork. That's one of the difficulties the Cork players have had to contend with at the back during these opening minutes. Strong sunlight. So it's going to be Sean Dowling from O'Loughlin Gales playing today in just his fifth championship match. Known in Kilkenny, by the way, as an omelock hurler. I haven't heard the phrase before, but they say it's his due to his unorthodox style. Nothing unorthodox about this man. Martin Comerford, direct, swinging it in and putting it over. Great point. Kilkenny are doing as they will. They are the dominant force in this match, and Cork have real, real problems. 7-1. Came from the line ball, from the Omlock hurler. Inside here, towards Martin Comerford, and he's leading his man, who was Dermot O'Sullivan, a merry dance. Two points for Comerford from two shots. Referee has gone back now to have uh, a word with goalkeeper Donalog Cusack. Not quite sure what that was about. Did you understand the... The cause of concern? Not really, Joe, no, unless they're trying to change the ball. I think it may well be that he's trying to introduce his own version of the hurling ball, his own slitter. The cork made one, and the referee had spotted it. They want to do something, Joe. Timmy McCarthy trying to do something here. They need to score badly, Cork. Hooked well. And it's out over the end line, and it's wide. That was a wonderful hook to deny the farmer from Castle Lions. And I think it was Noel Hickey who got him at the end. Just watch this again in reprise here. This is what Timmy McCarthy loves to do, but the other players needed supply, and it was indeed Hickey who got in the telling challenge. Great play. One farmer denying another there. Nicely done by... Roland Curran, but there's a clash there and involved Tommy Walsh and John Gardner and the referee has uh, whistled in favour of Kilkenny. Kilkenny and Brother Cork are warming up their substitutes on the sideline, not that they'll need too much warming up on a day like today, which is nice and humid. John Gardner's got a ticking for that last foul. Tommy Walsh wants a strapping round his helmet. Henry Shefflin wants another point. Two from three so far. That's two out of three. Perfectly delivered. From play. Kilkenny are the masters. And when Cork foul, they've got Henry Shefflin who'll take a good 80% of the frees and convert them. And you wonder what Donald O'Grady can do. The earpiece there links him up with the other four selectors who sit in the stand and see what's going wrong. And an awful lot is going wrong right now. That was the shot by Satanto Halpine, and it's gone wide. An awful st 20 minutes into it, they haven't played, they haven't been allowed to play. They've missed a number of chances as well, a total of eight wides bad play in an All-Ireland final in any kind of match. Those who see that the bottle is half full and not half empty will say, well, at least Cork created the, that number of chances. There's Kavanagh playing in his 24th championship match. He's out over the sideline, or at least the ball was before he gathered it, I think, because the linesman has indicated it's going to be a Kilkenny ball. One of the quiet men of the Kilkenny team. You very rarely hear him say an awful lot during a game to the other defenders. Well, one of the conversation points we had earlier, Cyril, was that Cork and their selectors didn't change the team in the championship. We're at game number five. It's the final. Same 15 starting. Will this tactic of not changing come back to haunt them? Well, they're trying to let them settle out. They really need a score. Well, Kilkenny have been uh, doing well on Cork's puck out so far. That's Tommy Walsh. He's starring. Forget about the hip injury. He's taken on Gardner now. Sherlock's after him. O'Sullivan's out. Oh, he's put it wide, but there wasn't much in it. 
It was a great attempt by Tommy Walsh. He's flying, having his best game in the campaign so far. Yeah, Jerry, he's really on song. Like, this is John Garner swinging at nothing. Tommy catches his goals. He's very, very fast. Goes down here on the left wing. Watch the... He has everyone... Maybe put off a little bit and just... That just goes barely wide. And a player down in need of attention is Wayne Sherlock. Cork doctor, of course, is Dr. Con Murphy. 16 All-Irelands he's been involved in with Cork in hurling and in football. It's a long, long time since Wayne Sherlock and his team have scored as the Sabres go back into the bench, having done the warm-up part. Not called on yet. Cork scored in the fourth minute. We're now nearly 23 minutes into it. So we've gone 90 minutes or thereabouts without a Cork score. It's been that bad. Alan Brown will just try to get his team as close as possible to Kilkenny heading into the break. No goal so far as McCarthy fires it into Joe Dean. There might be one here. Satanta has missed it. It's a 65. They get something out of it, but they should have got a goal. And Satanta is the first to realise the genuine possibilities there. He's got two sevens so far in the campaign. Dean fed it across. Satanta was unmarked. That should have been in. Yeah, Joe, you'd have to credit though, uh, James McGarry. Came off the goal line very, very quick. Beautiful flick here. He, as he hampers across to Sazanta there, McGarry came fast. Because he was, took his eye off, but like McGarry came very fast and let him take his eye off. It was the best goal chance. Another one might come here, and McGarry chests it in well. Satanto Halpin just out of luck. Another day that would have been flicked into the corner. Niall McCarthy, Cork sensing that there are chances still there before half time to get valuable scores as Gardner strikes it but really you just didn't feel he had any confidence in himself that's it sir they haven't the confidence at this stage John Gardner's gone back right wing back and Tom Kenny's gone midfield but the confidence has been drained out of Cork and like Kilkenny are tapping away the points to hold them seven clear and if Kilkenny get another chance for goal this game could be gone, gone beyond recall for Cork that's four wides by the way by John Gardner as you say now marking Tommy Walsh Ronan Curran dropping it down. All the breaking ball going Kilkenny's way. Very good at the scrappage play. Tom Kenny now sucked into the middle. Up towards Alan Brown. The captain loses this early. Claims he was being pushed. Mickey O'Connell's chasing after it. Hasn't really got into the game so far. There against Hickey. Dean on his... Uh, down on the ground. Rolled up by O'Connell once again. The little flick forward. Way off the target. Satanto Ahalfin can't hold on to it. She looks absolutely frustrated after the long, long journey from Cork. Cork with ten wides. The half-time break can't come fast enough for them. There's still another ten minutes to go. Seven points between the teams. Just one Cork point. Lots of pressure. No joy. Gardner. Good move. Going beyond McCarthy into Satanto Halpin. Taking on James Wiley. Could have the beating of him if he gets decent possession. Softly hit that time, McGarry again, good control, takes it down well, feeds it out towards JJ Delaney and a good lengthy clearance way down the field. John Hoyne reaching for it, couldn't make it, Walsh is coming after it. Here comes Pat Mulcahy, wearing the number three of Cork, but playing somewhere around left corner back. And it's Michael Cavanagh out to it first. Good play by Cavanagh. Back there, DJ Carey. Great race by DJ, listen to the crowd, urging him on. Belting it forward into space. And that has gone wide. Four wides now by Kilkenny. That's the first we've seen of DJ in this match. He had uh, gone out the field, allowed Mulcahy to come out the field. And that was the first time we saw both of them in the action. Timmy McCarthy losing it here to JJ Delaney great play Wayne Sherlock couldn't hold it it bounces out towards Ronan Curran who couldn't come up first time does the second has support David O'Sullivan needed a bit more room couldn't get it Kilkenny are just closing in blocking down we talk about the way Tyrone play football in Croke Park where they give you no space Kilkenny are doing exactly the same to Cork it hots up just a few pushes and shoves. 
nothing terribly serious and the referee is in quickly he's isolated it was uh, Martin Cole, Martin Comerford he was thinking about uh, having a chat with this is it again that was O'Sullivan the block down there by Tommy Walsh and a bit of whipping and pulling and it's Tommy Walsh in the end who's called across and this is probably going to be the first yellow card of the match so 27 and a half minutes gone Tommy Walsh with three points from three shots off the target and one yellow card and Joe he was unlucky there because a lot of wide pull on both sides well, sometimes referees treat situations like that by just picking one guy the misfortunate one but it could come against him later on of course that is the difficulty in vacant and intensive mood after all of that it's going to be Derek Ling, who will take a sideline ball. Derek Ling, who's a first cousin of uh, soccer player Michael Reddy, who's still playing with Sunderland, I think. John Gardner driving it away down towards the Tanto Houtin against Ryle. The break taken this time by Ryle. Good clearance by the young man. Down towards Henry Shefflin, turning well against Sean O'Rourke Houtin. And Kilkenny winning possession vitally in key areas, denying Cork. At this stage, Donald O'Cusick has been tucking the ball out time and again. So much of the play has been coming down towards the Hill 16 area. Again, the puck out towards Alan Brown. Kavanagh is keeping an eye on him, so the others are dipping in, and it's Timmy McCarthy releasing it here. Nice play by Tom Kenny. Kenny looking to score inside to a Houtin. Players coming in support. Alan Brown is one of them. And great support play again at the back there for Kilkenny. And they get it away. Magnificent play. Whenever there's a hint of danger, they're back. And they're helping one another out. And it's working time and again. Henry Shefflin here. Henry against three Cork men, which will leave a, a gap. But he couldn't spot the gap. Couldn't get it through. And that in the end is Mickey O'Connell driving him into, runs out into a couple of Kilkenny players, winning the free. Derek Ling is number 18 from the Emeralds Club. This is O'Connell here. Knew what he was about, and Ling came in. Didn't need to foul like that, but did so. And he's given John Gardner a chance of a second cork point. 25, nearly 26 minutes since the last one. Looking for a goal, I think it's dead. Getting nothing of it. And Kilkenny once again, solid at the back. Well, there was a point chance for the taking for John Gardner, but he was lobbing it in around the house, looking for something bigger than that. Mulcahy. Sweeping it forward. Timmy McCarthy's got in to join the attack. Here's Alan Brown, Cork looking for a goal. And the referee has blown the whistle, so Tanto Halpine has it, but it wouldn't have counted in any case. It's a free from 20 metres out. And it's a chance for Cork, who are absolutely outplayed in so many phases of the game, to get within six points of the champions. Major, even though they're outplayed, they've plenty of chances to score. And isn't that the chance they're coming and they're kind of going for goals on instead of taking the points and such? They're, well, they're being outplayed, but there's plenty of chances. If they tap over the points, they're still in the game. So Dean looking for his second point. The first was from a free, and the second is from a free. It's some commentary on Cork's first half performance. 31 minutes are played, it's eight points to two, and the only scores that Cork can come up with are from two frees. McGarry's puck out. Dowling. Good variation of the puck outs by McGarry, going long and then going short, and everybody anticipating that it might come their way. Eagerly taken up here by Niall McCarthy, and he's won himself a free, really fired up. And I'm sure the Cork mentors are probably going to be saying to their team very shortly, look, forget the first half. Mistakes were made in front of goal in particular. We allow them too much latitude. But now they're probably saying you could still win it. And Kilkenny will have that inner belief as well that comes with being champions. Could make for a very, very good second half. Dean. 
inside the 65 meter line. He's misdirected it. Just not happening. Well, in terms of scoring chances, Cork have actually created more scoring chances in the first half so far than Brian Cody's team. Cork have created 17 scoring chances. Kilkenny scored just 14. So plenty of chances. The conversion rate is very, very bad. DJ Carey hoping to lead Kilkenny to another McCarthy Cup success. He's one of three. This to put a bit more daylight now between the teams as they head towards the break. We haven't seen the signal from the fourth official just yet as to how many extra minutes will be played. It's going to be one. Shefflin right in front of goal. Should be another. And it is. The game's leading scorer, Henry Shefflin, his four points all coming from freeze, and it's nine points to two. Kavanaugh was swinging at it, needed Sean Dowling. He's having a great game and a great season as well. Nicely controlled here. Tommy Walsh having discarded the red helmet, but this time he misses his chance. Fluff the opportunity. He's got into top of the right, being marked by Pat Mulcahy. And uh, DJ Carey has uh, moved out to left half forward. Timmy McCarthy now steadying himself. Didn't get very decent power on the shot. Still runs in, calls the moment of concern for the backs in there. Everybody's after it. Joe Dean's after it, but the back standing firm. And in the end, they win the free out. Frustration for Joe Dean, but they really are up against it. A very committed and resolute Kilkenny defence this afternoon. This is it again. The chance was there just for a moment, but you can see James Ryle spreading his body back there. JJ Delaney coming in, the number seven, and one in the end with Noel Hickey ready to take it away. He's had a great match, Hickey. And the referee decides that the uh, ball that was thrown in there wasn't the correct one. So the hoppity, rubbery type of ball is the one they favour. That's the one back in action. It's pretty lively. And Kilkenny have been making best use of it. Leading by seven. Almost into the one minute of injury time at the end of the first half. Walsh playing it through, intended for Hoyne. Seized on instead by Wayne Sherlock. There for Sean O'Gohaltine. May look for his brother Satanta. Runs on beyond him. And that's good play again by Noel Hickey in front of an attendance of 79,383. Just about capacity. Here's Tom Kenny again, now in an attacking role. In for Timmy McCarthy. They need a score, Cork, and Timmy McCarthy is... Is he going to provide it? The umpires are having a long, long shot about it. The referee has put his uh, arm up and says to the umpires, if you can't decide it, and I can, and they finally wave the white flag. Hard to believe, Jared, that both umpires didn't even make a move. Nine points to three. Not quite sure what the umpires were doing here. It's not siesta time just yet. There's still a few seconds left. McCarthy swung it, and the umpires couldn't make up their mind. It was a perfect point. Six between them. Wayne Sherlock trying to urge on the others around him. He's up against DJ Carey, one of the greats of the game, the greatest modern day hurler that I've seen play this sport. DJ and John Gardner there just uh, having a couple of angry words. Nothing too much, and the referee perfectly in control. We've already played the one minute of additional time, but it's now very much at the referee's discretion. No slitter, so we're waiting for the right ball. And finally, the match can restart. John Gardner. Ryle contesting there with Satanto Halpin, and the referee's whistle brings to an end the opening 
36, nearly 37 minutes of the 115th All-Ireland Hurling Final. Kilkenny have been more economical, they've dominated in key exchanges, and they have a lead at half-time of just six points. Might, might not be enough for a Cork team who really didn't get going with the same fluency that they normally possess, and they trail by nine points to three. Let's go down to the sideline, get some comment now from a reporter who's Marty Morrissey. John Allen, Cork selector, not a good first half by any standards for Cork. No, not a good first half. Uh, we're backpedalling most of the time. Um, I'd say if you were to boil it down, we've missed at least 10 chances. We've missed a goal. We've missed at least five very small chances. There's only six points in us. Um, I'd say the difference in the two teams is we're not taking our chances, and they are. Your hurling doesn't seem to be as confident as it normally is. Obviously, you'd be happy to get him in at half time. It doesn't. Our, our striking is quite poor. Um, our forward striking is quite poor. We're second to the ball a lot. We're, it's, it's, it's like the Wexford match where everything is going right for them. They've missed very few chances. As I said, we've at least 10, had 10 wides. One five at least at very scorable chances which we've not taken, which we'll have to do something about. What are you going to say? What's Donald O'Grady going to say at half time? Well, I think, you know, the game is certainly there to be won. Six points is a big lead. I've no doubt about that. Six points is a huge lead. I would think certainly the game is still there to be won. John Allen, thank you very much. Noel Skeen is with us as well. Noel, in contrast, you must be a happy man. I wouldn't say that really, Marty. Uh, I think uh, we lost a lot of possession that we shouldn't be losing. Uh, we got some good scores. But uh, on top of that, you must remember that uh, Cork drove some uh, wides there. That, uh, you know, it means that they're getting possession and uh, they're, sh they're shooting this out a bit. But uh, all in all, like, I suppose, it's good to be leading at half-time. But, you know yourself, you don't win all Ireland in, in 35 minutes. It takes 70 minutes. So... It's going to take us a uh, hard battle in the second 35 minutes, but we want the upper performance. We won't be satisfied with that performance, to be quite honest about it. Like, you know? You know, skiing, the very best luck for the second half. Thank you. The contrasting views, and one thing which uh, John Allen might note, that Cork had 11 wides in that first half. We'll give you the other statistics very, very shortly. But uh, just watch as the players are going off here once again. Dear Bill O'Sullivan, they're having words with Brian Cody. And Cork created 18 chances, took only three of them. There are six between them at half time of the final. It's Kilkenny 9, Cork 3. We'll be back. Still very much with both hands on the Liam McCarthy Cup at this stage. Nine points to three they lead. Score six points difference, gap on the field, an ocean. Uh, six points in hurling is not a big lead, but mm. uh, the way Cork are going at the moment, six points is a lot because they don't look like they're capable of scoring at all. They've got two points from freeze and one point from play just on the stroke of half time. At this level, it's not good enough. You know? But Kilkenny aren't much better at the other end. Tommy Walsh got three good points, Martin Cullen for two, but apart from that, they're not they're yeah. not clicking. Like overall it's a hugely disappointing game. You know, the final was very for the build up. Sure. But it's not what we were expecting. And no, it certainly is not. Have a look yeah. at the statistics, Sherlock Nan as well. About the first half, it's not so much like Kenny won the first half, they mutilated Cork. Well, that's it, and I tell you, it's very hard to pick out highlights of the first half. It has been that late. And it, it reminds me of something you said to me before the game, Michael, that you felt the Cork were very, very tense. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the trick in coming into an All Island final with an experienced team is to keep the balance between keyed up and getting over tense. Yeah. If you get over tense, you freeze. Yeah. Your shots go astray, you're hitting wise, it should be going over the bar. I was, yeah, the I the was, striking isn't half as good as it usually is. Yeah, I was down last night in the, the hotel where the yeah. team were staying. Yeah. I actually saw them there. That actually struck me about them. Yeah. People around the team said they were very focused. Yeah. The, well, well, actually, I, I thought they looked... Correct. I like to see players the night before a, a final joking and laughing and have a bit of fun. Yeah. Time enough to get tense when you're coming in here at the Crow Park or maybe an hour beforehand. If you, if, if you can gear it towards that, then you're going to best. Now here's one of the highlights of the game, and I suppose the highlight of things so far, Henry Sheff, and I, I, I am sure out to, uh, to Tommy Walsh. Tommy would have has a fantastic start to the game. Now off his left hand side. Now remember Tommy is more a cornerback at a wing back. He's playing a wing forward and he has scored three glorious points. Now, he, he, he is off his left-hand side. Now, the strange thing about it is he has been changed from wing forward into corner forward. I think to accommodate DJ, to bring DJ into the game. DJ has been brought out to that wing, but he has got a few glorious points. And, and this one is Martin Comerford. This was a classic point. You know, they were some of the few highlights. Yes. Whatever highlights there were, they came from Kilkenny. Whatever good scores there were. Now, that's not to say about Cork. Uh, Cork can't have a 
Right. John Garner from midfield. Now look at the skill of this here, Martin Comfort. You're that is a, that, that, that's a score to adorn any final, but I mean it's easy to adorn this final because there are so yeah. there are so really good things, few good things in it. Well we can only hope for a good second half. Joe Dooley's wife Mary is here with us in the, the box. She's a cork woman. She's screeching in anguish at some of the misses. She's not wrong in that. The goal chance was a great chance. It went to the back. <coughs> the goal chance was a brilliant chance. Um like if you felt if Cork could get a goal to bring them back into the game. Timmy McCarthy here comes onto the ball. And Timmy has tried hard, in fairness, he's won a lot of possession. Plays in a good ball across the field. And Noel Hickey slipped, the only mistake he made. And there's the ball. Mr. Tanter. He's had an absolute blinder at full back. He's outstanding. Slips there. Joe Dean. Maybe Mr. Tanter just snapped out of there and, yeah. uh, and turned away. But it was a great chance of a goal. And they really need a goal to bring them back into it. But still, uh, six points is not a whole lot. And they have points of possession. Points yeah. of possession. Yeah. The two best players on the field are No Hickey and JJ Delaney. Two PK defenders. Yeah. I mean, there's points of ball coming in there. But oh. they're so hesitant to go for Kilkenny are not playing well. No, Kilkenny no. had a real disappointment here. Yeah, yeah. And they're there for the taking. And they're still there for the taking, even yeah. at half time. Sure. And the danger is now, of course, that they'll score a goal. And if they score a goal, then they'll it's be very hard to drag them back. Yeah. But if Cork get a goal at the start of the second half, they'll get a crowd behind them and we'll have a completely different game. Well, at least, uh, well, it's hope we do because it hasn't been great stuff so far. Commercial break coming up, second half of the match after that. I assume Donald O'Grady is going to give the Cork team a bit of an earful at halftime. I suspect so, as Brian Cody was saying, Gerlach Dan. Well, Brian Cody will be giving a right earful, and he, I think he gave one to Don <laughs> Diamond O'Sullivan as well at halftime on the way in there, but you can be sure he's not a bit satisfied with the way they're mm. playing. You know, they're holding up the ball around the middle of the field, they're not letting it into the full forward line. Has Eddie Brennan even touched the ball, Holly, in no. the first half? You know, and DJ, no. while he was inside, there was nothing going mm. in. Mm. You know, they were winning the ball outside, running it across, passing it across the field, passing it back. Not the direct play that you associate with Kilkenny. Now, all Cork have to do is to take a lesson from our man. We see Joe Kerner go down, saying, calm it down, calm it down. Stick to your game plan. Keep shooting for points, and eventually your your, a few will come, and that will lead to your conference. So there's no panic yet in Cork. But the avalanche is coming now. If yeah. they resist that and fight back and stay with Kilkenny, be close to with 15 minutes to go, this game could end up really, really tight. It could, it could, uh, this game could actually spark open Michael Dighton because it's been so poor in the first half. We can't just kind of amble on like that. No. I mean, this is an All Ireland final. There's the, there's the Liam McCarthy to be won there. Yeah, but the, like the tension obviously before the game <coughs> um, got to the teams. Now that should be, you know, dissipated. And the standard has to improve in the second half. But um, <coughs> if Cork don't up in the first five or ten minutes, Kilkenny will come now with a traditional burst. All their matches this year have been won in the 15 minutes after half time. They destroyed Tipperary and Wexford in the Leinster final just after half time. They're going to come now with a big assault. And as Jer said. If Cork can manage to hold them now for the next 10 minutes, they have some chance. But otherwise, Kilkenny can pull away and, and win this match very easily. You just noticed actually, Joe Lock now, uh, Donald O'Grady is out beside, on the side of the team. Actually, I'm out. I reckon what Donald O'Grady has done is he has said, them, uh, right, is you going to win the All Ireland now? You sit down there and you decide what you're going to do. Managers often do that, I've often done it myself. Yeah, yeah. Leave him there and mm. say, listen, you're playing absolutely rubbish. Sit down there now, think about the next 35 minutes. Think what it'll be like travelling home on the train tomorrow without that McCarthy Cup. You have 35 minutes now to do. Get out and do it. So I'd say you can be sure. Park was a mighty assault against the Kenny the start of the second half. Okay, gentlemen. Are they good enough? Are they good enough? That's the question. I don't think they are. That's the question. The 25 minutes to show us whether they are or not. Let's go back again to Sir Farland's jerk hand. I think that's exactly what Don O'Grady has been doing. Because he had one little word there with Alan Brown after he finished his meander around the length of the field before the team came back out and now it's down to the two teams two sets of players to determine who wins this year's McCarthy Cup only six uh, first half that's John Hoyne good ball in asking a few questions of the court backs when Sherlock was fouled and it's going to be a free out. That's the first time I've seen Eddie Brennan in the action incidentally. You heard Ger Lockdown asking the question as he touched the ball. I don't think so. Just committed the foul there. Free to Cork. So Dermot O'Sullivan to launch this one. Just inside his own 45 meter line. Big one in towards Alan Brown. And again, it's Noel Hickey. What a match he's playing. Outstanding. John Gardner. 
JJ Delaney dropping it forward here. Comerford is beaten to it by O'Sullivan. Comes back out into the middle. Again, Kilkenny raid. John Hoyne shot partly blocked down. Sherlock put under pressure. And Comerford swings, punches the air with delight because he knows it's on target. He's got a third. Three shots, three points. And it's ten points to three. Cork were hoping to make the better start, but the dominant team, the beginning of the second 35 minutes once again, the champions, the Cats from Kilkenny. Tom Kenny outside towards Sean Ogo Halpine. Over towards Ben O'Connor, is that a very quiet match? That's because of the influence of J.J. Delaney. Paddy Mullally trying to hold it, leaving it there for Tommy Walsh, who's been reacquainted with his red helmet, surrounded by Cork Ben, and there's a knock in the face there of Mickey O'Connell. He's down, will need attention, play continues. It's John Gardner out here to Niall McCarthy. Sells the dummy well there. And that will lift the crowd. McCarthy has put it over the bar. They go point for point at the start of the second half. And once again, there are six between the teams. After uh, we saw the injury there to Mickey O'Connell, it was Niall McCarthy who continued on his way, having got the pass from Gardner, and that was a great strike. And there's going to have to be a blood substitution now for Mickey O'Connell. And the man who's going to come on will be Jerry O'Connor, who could very well have been a, in a contention for a starting 15th place. That's Niall McCarthy, leaving it here for Tom Kenny. Cork suddenly lifting the tempo of the game, inside the Sipanto Halpine against Ryle. Dean is calling for it, doesn't come to it, spills loose, and the referee blows the whistle just as Michael Cavanaugh was clearing it out. It's a free in, and once again, Satan to the tall man, 6 5, is fired up. O'Grady's done his business at half time, telling the players exactly what's demanded of them. This was Satanto Halpine against James Ryle, and Ryle was having to foul. Down went the tall number 13, Cork at the free in. Dean will be the taker. This should be an easy one for him. There are five points between the teams. Joe Dean has pointed a third from the 20-meter line. 10-5. That's three-pointed freeze from four in all. And the Cork fans now begin to feel the journey wasn't all in vain. James McGarry. Kilkenny will have been certain that Cork will ask questions during the second half. Tom uh, McCarthy down to the other McCarthy, Niall McCarthy. Alan Brown nipping in here, the Cork captain, across towards Satanto Halpin, and Ryan committed himself and leaves the gap. And Satanto's bearing down on goal, and he has put it over the bar when he might have gone for a three point score, but they don't count. It's his first of the day. The fans are fired up, the players are fired up, and James McGarry is trying to remain as nonplussed as possible, and I think he's claiming that that might well have been outside. Jared Umper has waved the ball wide, so it's going to be, it won't be, it won't be a point, it's a wide. So it doesn't count. So just to check, it's 10 points to 6 in one place and 10 points to 5 in the other. It's 10 points to 5, we haven't confirmed. One of the scoreboards is wrong. It's now been amended. Still 5 between them. Cancel out Satanta's point that wasn't. Gardner going forward. This is Jerry O'Connor. Too much pace in the pass. Line ball to Kilkenny. This is a bit more like it for both teams. And Mickey O'Connell ready to come back into the action again or is he going to do so no he's not well that'll disappoint one of his biggest uh, fans down in Middleton who's Aileen Ahern over in Boston watching it today Donald O'Grady very single minded as you clearly have to be at this level of competition nicely rolled up here Kilkenny trying to take command of it again John Hoyne 
Swept across here by Tommy Walsh towards DJ Carey, who's back there towards top of the right and collides there with Pat Balkany and the referee has blown his whistle. The free, the foul by DJ. Now the greater noise has been made by the supporters of the red and white, the Munster champions. DJ leading the Leinster champions. And down injured is John Gardner, I can tell you, out of picture. He was in the wars a little while ago. And the fans now are trying to get behind the team, but just a mention of John Gardner, I think it should be said that he's done a very good job since going back to right half back because there was a real threat and a real menace there as long as Tommy Walsh was getting decent ball and good latitude. That's right, Charlie. They've put out Tom Kenny midfield, and Garner would probably prefer to be weak at the half back anyway rather than midfield. But it's a good period for Cork at the moment. They're, they're more or less come back into the game, but they still want to tack on the scores. It's ten points to five. So Jerry O'Connor is on. No longer just a blood substitution. That's down towards Jodine. Bounces away off Noel Hickey. Kilkenny in some difficulty, and it's a penalty! Satanto was grounded. Pat O'Connor makes the decision. Or is it? No, it's not. Well, he indicated by waving his arms out wide that it was going to be a penalty. He's changed it. Baffling. Comes back to Jerry O'Connor. And that has gone wide. There was the Satanto wide. There was the penalty that wasn't. And there's another wide here. What do you make of that? Yeah, Jerry, you have to say at the moment that Cork aren't getting the breaks as such. Everyone thought there was a penalty there. Now, it's very hard to see from here and Satanta's point as well, but Kilkenny are hanging in. It's a bad period for them, but like Cork would want to get their scores, Jerry, because if they don't, Kilkenny will tack on a few more. If we see that again later on, I'm quite convinced the referee went down, blew his whistle, waved his arms wide, signalling a penalty. Doesn't count anyway. Derek Ling under pressure. Good play away by J.J. Delaney. And David O'Sullivan loses the stick, but he's a footballer, come a hurler, and takes them all on. But it's a day when you just need to remain calm and disciplined. And Pat Mulcahy there just tapping him in the front and saying, easy does it. And Martin Comerford going in for a ruling as well, but it was a dragging down of this man here, Dermot O'Sullivan. Pats on the back for him, free to call. It's still 10 5. There he is without the hurley. And then running in to Eddie Brennan initially, and then Comerford. O'Sullivan's long, long free to Jimmy McCarthy, breaks it down, swept away by J.J. Delady, doing an awful lot of tidying at left half-back. DJ Carey out 65 metres from the court goal, trying to set something up. Nobody inside, really, goes for himself, and he's put it wide. That's two shots on the target by DJ during the match, and they've both gone to the right of the posts. Kilkenny are about to make a change, and Tommy Walsh is going to go off, and it'll be Conor of Phelan who'll come on. So Conor Phelan, who's got uh, great skill, great ability, a young player, replacing another young player. Each side having made a substitution. Here's Satanto Halpin, legs taken from under him this time, and it's going to be a free in. JJ Delaney committing the foul, free from about 25 metres out. Yeah, Jerry, he's the one player, he's the one cock player that has, has the Kilkenny uh, backline rattle, if it's possible to rattle them at all, because they are very, very composed. But he's, he's creating a lot of trouble, and they're, they're fouling him. I know they're trying to target him as much as possible, but the difficulty is getting the passes to him on target on account of the fact that the players in midfield trying to play those long balls in are themselves under pressure. You get nothing easily against Kilkenny. Dean to strike. Should be another one. He's got three for the day so far. Cork is into the Kilkenny lead. The margin is down to four points. By no means a classic, but very competitive at this stage of the contest. Will it be Donal O'Grady's crown?
Cork's 29th or Kilkenny's 28th. All to be determined in the next half an hour or so. Good play here. That's a fine effort by Derek Ling. Great point by Ling. Raises the white flag, and that's wonderful play when you can see a midfielder coming in, taking the responsibility and snapping it over. Blowing into Kilkenny into a five-point advantage again. Here he is coming out of midfield. Nobody able to get in a decent tackle on him. And a good shot. And that's Kilkenny's first score now in ten minutes of the match. Peter Barry up here towards Henry Shefflin. Plenty of time to compose himself, lobbing it in towards Conor Phelan. Great catch by David O'Sullivan. Mighty play. Out towards Jerry O'Connor, the new man in, slipping. Not quite wearing the studs he should be wearing, perhaps. Ronan Curran way down. Peter Barry's under it, calling for it. Let's it drop. Still gets it the second time. All in after it. And he emerges with it and gets a high challenge. Releases it outside towards Niall McCarthy. McCarthy working beaverishly. Back there as well, Jerry O'Connor and John Gardner, who got the last touch. They decided it was a Kilkenny player. Line ball to Cork. This is the catch again down at the other end. Connor feeling powerless to deny the towering Dermot O'Sullivan. And that has gone wide at the other end as we were watching the play at one side of the field in reprise. It's tense. Very warm evening as well at uh, Croke Park. McGarry now with the sun into his eyes. Kilkenny trying to win their own puck out. Comerford going across to right half forward. It breaks loose to Sean Dowling. Back to Comerford. Kilkenny trying to establish control of the game once again. Conor Phelan trying to make an impact and he also slides and slips. So it's interesting, the two subs have just come in. And the first thing they do is fall around the place here. And it's one of the difficulties with the surface here at Croke Park nowadays. Yeah, there's no doubt about that, Jerry. It's very, very hard to hold your feet here. And if you're traveling to the ball at all, just do a quick little shimmy and you're gone. There's a kind of a hollow underneath. It's not got the same give, the ball, when it bounces, as it does, say, in, in Thurlis. Alan Brown against Cavanaugh. Runs on beyond both of them to Timmy McCarthy. Turning around past Dowling. And that's going well to the right. Idea was good. Execution not quite matching up to the approach. And that is a total now of 15 wides by Cork. Sean O'Leary there, one of the great corner forwards of the 1970s and 80s. One man you could always depend upon to get a goal, how they could do with one now. But still, five points between them. Kilkenny only tagging on two points for the second half so far. So being contained by Cork, as Wayne Sherman the way down towards Satanto Halpine, beating Royal to it. He's off again, though, Halpine. Satanto with a hand pass to Joe Dean, the goal of the game man, is content with the point. Five points for Joe Dean, the first to come from play. And a great run again made, made by Satanto Halpine. And it's 11 points to seven, only four in it. Approaching 15 minutes gone in the second half. What about that for a block by Wayne Sherlock to set it all up? And when he did set it up, this is what happened. Satanto was on his way. He has the beating of Ryle the whole time. And the selfless release resulted in the score at the other end. It's Martin Comerford trying to go through, still in there. Needing a bit of support, breaks back loose. Again, they try to get it up. Outside towards Paddy Mullally. He rushed his shot. The man who has been captain of the Kilkenny football team. Yep, they have one too. And these Cork fans delighted with that wide. Almost as good as a point at the other end, I'm sure they feel. And they recognise themselves. More time for consultation. Alan Brown couldn't take it. Great work indeed by Sean Dowling. Kept his eye on it, never deviated in any way. Wayne Sherlock released out to Dermot O'Sullivan. The Rock, they call him, down towards Joe Dean. 
Couldn't control it first time. Needed Alan Brown. Satanta's coming in to help out. Satanta has it. Into space. Ben O'Connor on his way. Good shoulder. Played in towards Dean. Can get him on there. And it's once again the fullback. No Hickey. And Hickey in a little difficulty here, but still has the presence of mind to pick up and release. Batted down by Jerry O'Connor. The twins, of course, in the half forward line for Cork. Ben and Jerry. This is the other member of the half-forward line, Niall McCarthy. Back out towards Ben. Nice little dodge. Angling the shot. Perfectly dispatched. Ben O'Connor, the score of his first point in this All-Ireland final. And Cork fans still believe that it's possible. Only three points in it. Ben O'Connor went into this match with a little uh, injury to the back of his neck. He's got a point there. He has some stitches at the back of his neck following an injury. But he's made it 11 points, 2-8. Met first time by John Gardner. Now Cork are putting it up to Kilkenny and the questions are being asked of the champions. Donal O'Cusack. Wayne Sherlock, part of a defence that had conceded eight goals in the previous three matches. Broken down by Dean, inside to Alan Brown. Runs away loose, and this time it's taken away nicely by Michael Kavanagh, the ice cool man, getting it forward to Henry Shefflin. Has enough room, angling the shot in. He's put it wide. It would have been a great point by Shefflin. That is now. The Cats were enjoying a fair bit of supremacy in the first half. You can see Hurley's flying out there that time. My goodness. That yeah. was from one of the mentors. What happened there, Joe? There was a corner back off his hurdle, and the mentor was very fast, flicked it out very quick to him. He's in there to do that, Joe. James Wilde, not standing his ground, and once again it's a Dante Halpin, and he scores! Santa Claus has delivered, Joe. He's trapped in all day. 18 minutes into the second half. Satanto Halpin with his third goal in the championship. His first score of the day here. Denied a point earlier on because it was wide. But this time, no question or doubt about it. James Royal rattled. His composure gone. The persistence and the athleticism of Satanta in evidence. And he fired. And he's put the team's level for the second time. Oh yes, this man believes. It's possible. It's possible for Kilkenny as well. 1-8 for Cork, 11 points for the champions. Now we're in for a fine last 15 or 16 minutes of action. Now McCarthy going for the point here, opening up the broad shoulder, strike out to, yes, he's put it inside. His point. And now Cork fans are enjoying this period of supremacy. It's the first time that Cork have led in the All-Ireland Final. One of the umpires wasn't 100% sure, but the man on the left was, and he waved the white flag eventually. Cork in front in points 12-11. Shefflin coming to try and level it. He's missed. Approaching 20 minutes gone in the second half, 15 to play. Now who's your money on? Yeah, uh, George's been a great second half, for, uh, especially for Cork, but the game has really lifted. First half, Kilkenny was so much in top and Cork missing because it's kind of a dull game. It's lifted now. But Kilkenny are good champions there. It's going to take a great team to beat them. I'll tell you what, if you're watching this on video later on, just wind through the opening 35 but it's Forget it. It was forgettable stuff. Brown. Down. Here's Timmy McCarthy without the stick. Into space. Satanta. The rangy player can't hold it this time. Taken up well by the Kilkenny backs. Peter Barry was there. Michael Cabana. Cabana tidy, but two men after him. And the ball is still in play. Joe Dean back towards uh, Brown without the Hurley. Back to Timmy McCarthy. Fancying his chances. Inside towards McCarthy, having to reach backwards. They've got a man over in Jerry O'Connor if they need him. He's got the scoring opportunity. And he has fired him well. But it's come back down. Down off the post. Reel it off for the Cats. 
And now all of a sudden big questions have been asked by Brian Cody. Is he to experience defeat at the hands of Cork for the second time? Pressure on the backs of Kilkenny. McGarry copes well. In 99, remember, in the rain, Kilkenny were hot favourites. Cork won by a point. They're leading at this stage by a point. Honor coming. Referee says play on. Good defensive work. And Kilkenny steal it back. And once again, it's Noel Hickey, always at the centre of the action. JJ Delaney to help him out, but a back clearance. Comes out to Niall McCarthy, has time. And that is a very poor miss by McCarthy. He has to appreciate how much space he had. He could have delayed an extra second if he needed it. He could, yeah, but it's a mile a minute at the second. Everything is going like Most people thought it was a free out. Comes out from here, he should have scored this. Has scored the harder ones and just flicks it wide. Well, he got two earlier on. And Brian Cody's team facing a bit of a crisis of their own. Remember, Cork only got two points for a long, long portion of the first half. They were on one for a mighty long time. And now Kilkenny with only two points in the second half. 22 minutes into it. John Hoyne bottled up by Sean Ogo Halpin. All the family are here. And that's going to be a free down. That time Ronan Curran doing his work well. What can Brian Cody now do? The manager leading the side along with the experienced Johnny Welsh and Noel Skeen. Joe, who'd want to be a manager? Well, you did at one stage. <laughs> I know, before he got a heart attack, it's a tough pressure job down there. Well, who'd want to be a spectator? It's more like it, I think. Dermot O'Sullivan. Court leading by one. The outsiders available at very good odds at the start of play. Brown inside to Dean. He has support and Timmy McCarthy's in for it and he lets it drop down. And Peter Barry is in swiftly. And he knocks it away out towards Derek Ling, trying to hurl it out of the centre. Henry Shefflin's available to help out. The hand pass out into the centre. They have support coming forward. It's James Ryle. Up towards Comerford, batted away by O'Sullivan, but it didn't go too far. Comerford has it again, looks at the target, goes for the shot himself, and that is over the bar. That's one that Kilkenny needed, and Martin Comerford has struck over a fourth point, and this fan is saying, yes, we can still do it. Great scoring chances at both ends from the reverse angle. This is what confronted Comerford, and he met the challenge well. It's turning into a great final. Oh, Halpin beaten this time. Good play at the back there. Hickey inevitably doing the covering. That's Tom Kenny. At this stage, uh, uh, Kilkenny reacted. With JJ Delaney gone back in on, on uh, Satanta, and uh, James Ryan has gone wing back. Oh, Satanta's gone down. JJ Delaney was having a, a nudge or two at him. I saw Noel Hickey coming in after him, but I didn't see Hickey making any contact. I might see it in reprise. And surely the umpires who were right alongside it saw everything. Is the referee going to speak to them? Well, he's going in now. The two people involved in that with Satanta were JJ Delaney and possibly Noel Hickey. But I thought Hickey was the last to arrive on the scene. Uh, Gerard, there's only a bit of pushing, you know, the usual pushing and shoving. I don't think the referee just say, cool it down a small bit. It was hard to cool it down in all Ireland final. Sure is. Well, he's content with a little lecture. The umpires clearly told him not much went on. It's going to be a free in. Interesting here now, Gerard. John Garner has missed all these frees in the first half. The question is, will he go for this one? He's composing himself. Plenty of height, good distance, but the accuracy isn't there. No points from eight shots at the target. That's a bad return by John Gardner when it comes to scoring, but as a half pack, he's done really, really well. Andy Comerford is about to be introduced into the action, and Richie Mullally. There's Andy, number 21, last year's captain. He's ready for the fray. Richie Mullally back from a broken bone in his leg. Been going really well in training. He's going to come in. So now the players coming off. It looks like James Ryle is one of them. Didn't have a good day. And Paddy Mullally. So it's one Mullally for another. 
26 minutes are gone. Time for the substitute now, Richie Mullally, to have a grand entrance. He's still in there bustling away. Andy Comerford waiting for the break to come his way, didn't do so. Derek Ling has it. Spoons it outside to Henry Shefflin. Kilkenny needing scores. That's great play by Shefflin. Breaking the hearts of the Cork backs once again. Five points for Shefflin. And this lady still has hope, and so have they, that the McCarthy Cup will be going back by the Noor. Good play by Shefflin. Yeah, Jerry shows how strong there. He can put on Mullally and, and, and Eddie Comfort. These ties are very experienced. Kilkenny now. 13 points to 112, leading by one. Sean Dowling, that's touched down there. Good play. Nicely away. Mulcahy setting up this attack for Joe Dean. It's good, but it drops short. One of the things I noticed about the new Croke Park, a number of the players like Joe Dean sometimes have difficulty measuring the distance accurately. It's a bit farther out than they've been used to. And this is a far out free. And Henry Shufflin has fired up. He's given Kilkenny the lead. And there are about seven and a half minutes of the final still to go. Incidentally, this is going to be the first Kilkenny free of the second half. It's an amazing statistic, but true. Yeah, Joe, he's a carry yet to score, but he's come back out to take this one. Long way out, but you can't like this guy is great under pressure. Remember the 365s he got against Tipperary. Converted each and every one of them. This is on his own 65-meter line. So about 85 metres from the goal, and he's put it to the left, and the captain has put it wide. They still live on their nerves. Kilkenny, the favourites of the champions, leading by one, 13 points to 1-9. The coaches bark out the instructions and hope that they get a response from their players. It's tense. Donalo Cusack pucking it out. Where's the next score to come from? Alan Brown's out around the 40. Andy Comerford coming into the equation here. And that diagonal shot has gone out over the sideline. Line ball to Cork. Bad use of possession by Comerford. A bit rusty, I think. It means that Cork now can go back into the attack. Every play from here on in is bound to be crucial. Hope it's a good match wherever you're listening to it. Jerry O'Connor lets it bounce off his legs, comes back towards Niall McCarthy. Into space here. Taken up here, once again by Ben O'Connor, going by. Oh, anticipating that Dean had gone to his left, he hadn't. And instead back there is Richie Mullally, who was such a wonderful National League way back in the spring as a wing-back. Good ball inside, intended for Conor Phelan. Runs on to Henry Shefflin. Can Kenny have a man over? It's Martin Comerford. He balances and he strikes. And he scores! It could be the crucial goal of the game. Thirty minutes into the second half. And the core defence was in a dither. And the disarray was punished in emphatic style by Martin Comerford. His shot striking the ground and bouncing in beyond Cusack. Doesn't get too many goals. It's his first of this year's cap. The other end. Come in and he's pointed. A swift return by the cork man. This is the goal again here. And it came from that pass inside to Martin Comerford, the defence at sea, the ball an awkward one to stop as it bounced in front of the keeper. It's some return by Martin Comerford, the big, tall, brave number 14 of Kilkenny. Five scores this afternoon from five shots. And now the turn of Cork to make a change as Ben O'Connor goes off. And coming in is Shawnee McGrath, the man who got three points in the second half in 99 against today's opposition. 
There are three between them. Kilkenny lead at a crucial stage in the match. John Gardner lets it bounce off his legs, follows it up himself, needs Niall McCarthy's intervention. Henry Shefflin's back there as well. But it's still McCarthy. No stick. Go for the boot. He does. Inside to Brown. 45 metres out. Cork come looking for another score with Tom Kenny. They need a point. Little block that time by Dowling. Beautiful work indeed by Sean Dowling. And Andy Cumberford is there to help out. And in the end, the clearance is by Michael Cabana. Everybody looking at the flight of the ball, following its direction. Runs on kindly for a couple of the Cork backs. But Cahy's under some trouble. Big pressure here as DJ has it. Brennan is to his left. DJ holds it up. Uses up a second or two. Can't get it to a colleague, however. And it's Pat Balkai who tries to get it away from danger. It's stuck on the 30 metre line and the referee will throw it in. Three between them still. Three minutes of playing go in this year's Guinness All-Ireland Hurling Final. Great pressure play from both teams. Some great individual performances. And still it's all to be done and all to be won. Kenny, way down. Great play by the fullback. Once again, it's Noel Hickey. He's had a wonderful game. He'll hardly play a better game in the Kilkenny colours. Dermot O'Sullivan back at the other end. Alan Brown trying to nurse it to himself. Andy Comerford, the old war horse, is in there. Three against one. Cork there in numbers. Coming in is Kenny. Then McCarthy. That's Tippy McCarthy. Stopped. This time by Peter Barry. Flashes the forward. Intended to link up with a colleague, but instead it's Niall McCarthy coming through. It's Cork who are behind by three points. Late in the game. Inside side is Jerry O'Connor. Stopped by JJ Delaney. Breaks it out and there's a foul on Delaney and it's going to be a free to Kilkenny. It will take a bit of pressure off their beleaguered defence and uh, Niall McCarthy just getting involved. Kilkenny with a couple of players down, as you can see. Half Kilkenny seized the initiative at a vital stage in the game after Cork asked them all kinds of serious questions. This is uh, the attack there a little while ago and the great play of J.J. Delaney. Yeah, Niall Ni McCarthy here would be lucky to stay on job, but because he had a frontal charge, he also used a stick afterwards. He'd be lucky that he does that he doesn't survive, you know, go get a red card. The referee is giving him the lecture. Is that an indication he's allowing him to stay? No, Hickey Jar is having a fantastic it game. Is. So is Martin Comfort, one four again from play. This guy is a big game player every year. Cork have created far more chances in this match than Kilkenny. 35 chances to 26. It emphasises how they've turned it around, their scoring rate's been poor, and he will be very, very annoyed with the way things have panned out. But it could still be Cork's day. He'll still believe it's possible, but time is against him. And Brian Cody will appreciate, I'm sure at this stage, that only a Cork goal can seriously affect them. As Eddie Brennan goes off and Jimmy Coogan comes on, Eddie had a very, very poor match, just didn't him for a player who was heading for the accolade of player of the year he heads for the dugout two extra minutes to be played so half an Kilkenny will need another point Cork will need a goal there hasn't been a replay for 44 years in the hurling final pressure on the Kilkenny backs Kavanagh just bats it down Shorty McGrath would settle for a point here, it's uh, close, but not quite close enough. Oh, Halpine, and that has gone wide. So two minutes to be added, 113 to 110. Are Kilkenny about to level in the league table? The tally with Cork, 28th time champions each. James McGarry playing in his 18th championship match. Possession vital for Kilkenny here and they have it. Once again they go forward with great purpose and determination. It's Connor Phelan, the sub, who's grounded but comes up with possession crucially. Kilkenny have the metal. They've done it before and they're doing it again. And it's Shefflin at points, his sixth. It's a great finish by Kilkenny. 
They wobbled for a long period of the second half as Cork rocked them with score after score. But Kilkenny have found their style and their rhythm again. And Shefflin, ever the hero. At the other end, Shorty McGrath has chipped in with a point. It's a late, late one. It means the gap has been narrowed once again to three points. But it's only Cork's second score just doing the tallies here in the last 15 minutes. Not quite good enough. The players themselves will realise. So a few more seconds to play as Sean Dowling knocks it forward and Kilkenny have it again. And the goal hero coming for it this time, drops it short. Don't look, Cusack, this is it. Cork have got to get a goal here, but they've also got to tag on a point. And I don't think it's within their possibility range at this stage. Satanto Halpin looking for the goal and then looking for some hope. He's got a free in, but there can't be much left in it. The referee has played two minutes of additional time. The shot is by Jerry O'Connor. It has uh, got to be taken again. A little bit too hasty. Well, there can't be much time now on the referee, I think, just signalling to the court players. This is just about it. David O'Sullivan is running forward to Joe Dean. Here he is into the equation. Trying to steam what roll his way through. Stopped by Peter Barry. Kilkenny with possession. And Kilkenny with the title. The champions have retained the McCarthy Cup. They had a battle on their hands in the second half. But they met the challenge head on. They had stars around the field. Wonderful defensive displays by the likes of Noel Hickey, JJ Delaney, Sean Dowling and Michael Cavada. And Martin Comerford with a goal five minutes from the end. Turned the match around in Kilkenny's direction when it was just on a seesaw. And the fans will go home, I think. Certainly from a Kilkenny point of view, thrilled and delighted to have retained their trophy. Cork fans will be very disappointed, but I'm sure will appreciate that they had a good season, beaten in the end by a goal and 14 points to a goal and 11. Only three between them. Let's go down now in a few moments' time once we uh, get an opportunity to uh, get some comment. But first of all, Cyril, uh, we've just got to have a little breather here after all of that. Yeah. It's got frenetic in the second half. Great second half. Kilkenny went in six points up. Brian Cody would have them chairs at the take from the first half. And definitely like the likes of Martin Comfort, Noel Hickey, Kevin, they were fantastic, and Peter Barry. But it was the subs he used in the second half. They had Richard Melani coming on, Connor Field, and Andy Comfort, Jimmy Coogan. Three of them lads would have won the All-Ireland last year. And like his, his, the, the Kilkenny strength and depth. Then you had Henry Sheffield knocking over a few times. Like, uh, you know, Eddie Brennan, uh, DJ had quite games and such, but they're a very, very good, strong team. And like, they're great champions. And who's to say they won't, win, they won't want to win three in a row? It's quite an achievement for Brian Cody there, Cody. People said he was ruthless, but he knew exactly what he had to do. And uh, it's all about winning the trophy in the end. And uh, I'm thinking in terms of Brian Cody's own career as a player. He won and he lost an All-Ireland minor medal against... And uh, he didn't want the same thing to happen with him as uh, manager losing again, having lost in 99. He's won in 2003 and Kilkenny are champions. Well, the bookies knew what they were talking about, but I think those experts as well who figured that Cork would go in and give it a real good lash, they've done exactly that. Yeah, Jerry, Cork would be disappointed with the display in the first half, but they had plenty of chances to knock over. Just the... Kilkenny or Togo just can't do that. You have to take your chances when they, when they rise. Let's go down and hear what Brian Cody has to say. The triumphant manager is talking with Marty Morrissey. Brian Cody... Congratulations first. The double has been achieved. Wonderful feeling, I'm sure. Oh, special feeling, Marty. I think. Without a breath there, I did a bit of running there, I think. I not able to do it anymore before her. I know, it's, it's a savage battle. You know, I'm not really mad about getting leads early on again, to be honest, because it's difficult to maintain that. You all our fans don't go like that. We're used to coming from behind and all the rest of it, but we were all worried at half time because, you know, a car didn't come up here to get thrown aside. And it was looking bad for us. Like, 
Shades of 99, looming large, but you know, all you do is you dig in, you battle, you dig in, then you battle again. And 70 minutes and 70 minutes and 73, whatever it was, and it's just terrific. Everybody was expecting you to come out and kind of put up scores like an avalanche, and certainly Gerlach Nan thought so at halftime in our analysis. But Cork really stuck to their task, didn't they? I think Jerry should know how to clear one lot of all areas without putting up avalanches. It's not about avalanches, Jerry, it's about grinding it out. Yeah, I mean, including in Southside beforehand, this is going to be a savage battle. And that's all it was, a savage battle. And all Ireland fans are for winning. Thank God we've won it. This is some achievement for you personally now, and indeed for Kilkenny. Oh, that's a great achievement for that man there, DJ Kerry. He's done everything in Hurling, and now he's lifting the Lee McCarthy Cup. And, you know, every last player in the panel essentially idolised the fella, since there were a lot of them were seven natures of age when they were watching him in all Ireland finals, and now they've won all Ireland medal with him. All they want to do is just drive him up them holding sand steps, yeah. And he was a major motivating factor. But like every last player in the field, our backs were savage. I mean, there had to be no Hickey Ed and JJ Delaney and these lads. I don't know how they were doing it, but they were doing it. I'm just naming two, but I could go on forever. Martin Comfort, I know, is ferocious work. But as a team, and the fellas who might and shine, they're digging in, they're hooking, they're blocking, they're hunting, they're hounding. And we're the all Ireland champions, and that's it, Martin. Thanks for coming. Okay, well done, Brian. Congratulations. So, Sean Kelly now to make the presentation. And a very special call to all our friends overseas. We are now going to. We are tapping the spare the house. August Trish, Seher, Untuk, Tanavok, August Portal, Tar Gordon D. McCarthy, and Dalarash, Go Kilkenig the Goth. Go Gordon Kislo. Have looked to Kirkley. They fought a good fight. It wasn't their day. But ultimate glory will come to them in the very near future. We're a market for Kirkley. And now, Kilkenny complete the double double. And and in the company of Mr. Brian Duffy, Managing Director of our General Sponsors Guinness, Kilkenny Oz O'Creorum, and Cardinal of Runner and Captain Kilkenny, Ireland's greatest, Kilkenny's hero, the legend from Goran, DJ Kerry. Big cheer for DJ winning his fifth All-Ireland medal today. Kilkenny the champions for the 28th time. Worthy winners, worthy champions. And but for the lapse in 2001 when they lost at the semi-final, they could today have won four in a row. They're that good a team. The fans will enjoy the occasion and the evening later on. It's a great pleasure and honour for me to accept the Lee McCarthy Cup on behalf of this great Kilkenny team for the second year in a row. Well, it's a great day for Kilkenny Hurling. It is a great day for Hurling and that, in no uncertain terms, went to a great runners-up today, Cork. They battled and battled. We all know what it's like to be on a losing side, but I have no doubt you have a very young team, a great team, and your turn will come again. I suppose there's, there's no greater honour in the game to come up here to Croke Park, a magnificent stadium, to accept this Lee McCarthy Cup. And I suppose with family, friends, in particular, it's a great honour for my own club, Young Ireland Sabres, and representative here today. And I want to thank each and every one in the club, players, committee, all combined, for putting me here today. Thank you very much. Throughout a long year, a lot of things have to go right. And certainly, things go right for us right from the start. 
We have a magnificent sponsor. Some fellas are saying we have too much gear. But I don't know, but whatever we have, we certainly have a very happy camp when it comes to gear and prepara preparation. And that's all down to a magnificent sponsor in Avonmore. <laughs> Behind them, we have a great supporters club led by Frank Morrissey and Jim Freeman. We have a great county board led by Ned Quinn and Pat Dunphy. We have a great backroom team. We have Noreen Roach, a dietitian. We have Joe Malone, Racker Cody on the hurls. Ty Crowley, Robbie Lodge, all our medical backroom team. And I hope I haven't left that. But I suppose when it comes to the crunch, we have a man who's with us for 10 years, has a team peaking every year, certainly that we've got to Ireland stage. Magnificent. Corkman, Mick O'Flynn. <laughs> Some fellas take a lot of stick. And when it comes to selectors and management, I suppose they're always in the fire line no matter what county they're in. They have tough decisions to make. They get on the air, respect of everyone. We're two great men, a legend in Harlan No Scheme. And a great man in the background, great selector, Johnny Welsh. And of course, the one man in it, Nick is always on the block, Brian Cody. <laughs> Ultimately, no honor and no match can be won without a team, without a panel. And anyone that was in James' party,